About 30 years ago, precisely on June 12, 1993, the most anticipated presidential election held in Nigeria. The goal was to elect a leader that would pilot the affairs of the nation for the next four years. This happened after years of military rule in the country. But just as the presumed winner, Chief MKO Abiola, was about to celebrate his victory, the Babangida led military junta announced the result of the election. It is true that the presidential election was generally seen to be free, fair, and peaceful. However, there was in fact a huge array of electoral practices virtually in all the states of the federation before the actual voting began. And in defiance of the actions of the military, Abiola rejected the decision and later declared himself president and commander-in-chief of the armed forces of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. The people of this country went to polls on Saturday, June 12, 1993, and without let or hindrance, chose me as their president. Didn't they? Because of this singular earth, Abiola was arrested and detained until he died in detention four years later. In this edition on his school media, we revisit the untold story of June 12 in Nigeria. We will discuss what happened on June 12, 1993, why Abiola became a man of the people and the significance of June 12. Please come with me. The presidential election of June 12, 1993 involved two political parties, the Social Democratic Party SDP and the National Republican Convention NRC. At that time, the military regime which has closely controlled the transition process favored a two-party system for the country. Consequently, Chief MKO Abiola was a candidate of the Social Democratic Party SDP, while Bashir Tofa was the National Republican Convention flag bearer. Despite the fact that the election was declared by both local and international observers as the freest and fairest election in the history of the country, the outcome never came to reality. The acclaimed winner, Chief Moshud Abiola, never held office and would ultimately pay the supreme price in fighting for his mandate to be restored by the military. The June 12 annulment and the crisis that followed has become a major part of Nigeria's history and has continued to shape discussions on democracy in the country. So, what really happened on June 12, 1993? Well, on June 12, 1993, Chief MKO Abiola ran for the office of President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria under the platform of the Social Democratic Party. His running mate for the election was Babagana Kingibe. His opponent in the election was Bashar Tofa, who had Sylvester Ogo as his running mate. Even though international and local observers declared that the election was free and fair, the military head of state, General Ibrahim Badamosi Babangida, cancelled the result of the election on allegations of corruption. After the annulment, Nigeria would never remain the same again. The military's action generated crises in the country, especially in the south. Spontaneous protests broke out in different cities across the south as pro-democracy activists, labor unions, and politicians called on the citizens to hit the street in protest against the decision of the government. The Nigerian people put pressure on the Babangida regime to respect the decision of the people, but to no avail. The government sent armed security forces to quell the protest and in the process, hundreds of protesters were believed to have died. But Abiola continued to reject the annulment. On August 27, 1993, under intense pressure from the people, Babangida decided to step aside from office. However, instead of handing over power to Abiola, he settled for an unelected interim national government that was to be headed by Chief Ernest Shunekon. Shunekon was a Yoruba man from Ogun State, the same state with Abiola. However, the interim government could only last for about three months before General Sani Abacha forced Shunekon to resign on the 17th of November 1993. While all these were going on, Abiola never gave up the fight to reclaim his mandate. On June 11, 1994, 
Abiola declared himself president and commander-in-chief of the armed forces of the Federal Republic of Nigeria in a speech delivered at a Petado area of Lagos. After the speech in which Abiola referred to the military as thieves and politicians in uniform, he became an enemy of the state. He was accused of treason and insurrection against the government. On June 23, 1994, Abiola was arrested at his home in Lagos by the government of General Sani Abaja. It has been speculated that Abiola was kept in solitary confinement with only the Bible and the Quran as his companions. On July 7, 1998, just when he was about to be released, Abiola died under controversial circumstances. But who is Chief MKO Abiola and how did he become a man of the people? MKO Abiola was born into the family of Salawo and Suliat Uraola Abiola in Abiokuta, Ogun State. His father was a cocoa trader while his mother traded in Kola North. His name Kashumawo means let us wait and see. Moshud Abiola was his father's 23rd child but the first of them to survive infancy, hence the name Kashimawo. It was not until he was 15 years old that Abiola was properly given the name Moshud by his parents. When Abiola came of age, he attended African Central School Abiokuta for his primary education. As a young boy, he assisted his father in cocoa trading. But by the end of 1946, his father's business venture was failing precipitated by the destruction of a cocoa consignment declared by a produce inspector to be of poor grade and unworthy for export and to be destroyed immediately. It is believed that Abiola started his first business selling firewood at the age of nine. He would gather the firewood in the forest at dawn before school and sell them before using the proceeds to support himself and his family. At the age of 15, Abiola founded a musical band where he would perform at various ceremonies in exchange for food. But as his financial needs increased, he started demanding payment for his performances. He was able to use the money to support his family and his own secondary education at Baptist Boys High School in Abiokuta. While in this school, Abiola was the editor of the school magazine The Trumpeter and Olushiguno Basinger was his deputy editor. At the age of 19, Abiola joined the National Council of Nigeria, the Cameroons, ostensibly because of its stronger pan-Nigerian origin compared with the Obafemi Awolowo led action group. In 1960, he obtained a government scholarship to study at the University of Glasgow where he acquired a degree in accountancy and qualified as a chartered accountant. He later became a fellow of the Institute of Chartered Accountants of Nigeria, ICANN. Before putting his heart into the rings to contest for president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Abiola has made his money from various business enterprises including communication and oil and gas. As many of us may not have known, the presidential election of June 12, 1993 was not the first time Abiola contested for president. His hope to become the president was dashed for the first time in 1983 when a military coup d'etat swept away the re-elected president of his party and ended the civilian rule in the country. Chief M.K. Wabiola later returned in 1993 to run for the highest office again and despite his popularity and the fact that he won the popular vote, the military led by General Ibrahim Badamosi Babangida annulled the election. So, how does the annulled June 12 election of 1993 shaped democracy in Nigeria? June 12 is now celebrated as Nigeria's Democracy Day in honor of Abiola and the restoration of democracy in the country. In 2018, President Muhammad Buhari announced the change of date from May 29 to June 12. The government statement read in part. June 12, 1993 was the day when Nigerians in millions expressed their democratic will in what was undisputedly the freest, fairest, and most peaceful elections since our independence. The fact that the outcome of that election was not upheld by the then military government does not distract from the democratic credentials of that process. Accordingly, 
after due consultation, the federal government has decided that henceforth June 12 will be celebrated as Democracy Day. Therefore, government has decided to award posthumously the highest honor of the land, G. Self Aru, to late Chief M. K. Wabiola, the presumed winner of June 12, 1993 cancelled elections. His running mate as Vice President, Ambassador Babagana Kingibe, is also to be invested with the GCON honors. Mr. Abiola, who was later imprisoned by the Sani Abacha's military regime while struggling to actualize his mandate, died in prison on June 7, 1998. Chief M.K. Abiola is an indigenous Ogun state in the southwestern part of Nigeria. Even as many people believe that Nigerians eschewed ethnic and religious considerations to vote Abiola as their president in order to end military rule, the Yoruba nation sees June 12 as a day to celebrate their hero and a president that Nigeria never had. In recent times, however, the call for cessation of Odudua Republic has intensified as different groups hold rallies across the southwestern state calling for a separate country. The call has been attributed to rising security challenges in the region. Popular Yoruba rights activist Sunday Adeyemu popularly known as Sunday Igbo, is at the forefront of the call for Yoruba secession. With the emergence of a Bola Tinubu presidency, we hope that those voices may begin to grow faint as days gone by. However, despite the strong calls for Yoruba nation by Igbo and his group, some other Yoruba leaders disagree. For instance, the leader of Yoruba social cultural group Afeni Fere, Pa Ayo Adebanjo, disagreed in an interview on BBC. According to him, we as Afeni Ferry does not believe in separation. Our problem is with the constitution and that is why we are calling on government to restructure the country back to true federalism, he concluded. But for you to fully understand how General Ibrahim Babangida's behind the scene manipulations created the June 12 crisis, you need to fully watch this video next. Don't forget to book the like button on this video and subscribe to my channel for more informative history stories like these. And I will see you in the next video. Thank you very much for watching. Peace.